What's up guys? This is Manoj Bhuptani. I welcome you all on behalf of the Edupedia world. It's been a lovely morning outside and I'm sure that you guys are enjoying your life and day to the fullest. So, in our last video we were discussing about some of the relevant topics relating to corporate governance and audit committee. This is the last video presentation in which I'll be interacting with you guys with respect of some of the remaining topics related to corporate governance and audit committee and I'm sure that you guys must be honoring your word and that was to revise do ensure that guys so let's mark the beginning of this particular presentation with head start with the first topic of the day and that will be contents of CEO CFO certification under clause 49.5 and this question was asked in CA final examination for May 2010. So what does it basically talks about? So first of all, you need to understand who is the person who is being referred to as CEO and who is the person who is being referred to as CFO first of all. So guys, CEO is that person of the company who is basically considered as the kind of like managing director. He is the person who is basically taking care of overall affairs of any of the company. Okay, he is a person who is directly involved in each and every kind of working of that particular company. He is the one that one stop solution for any of the company be it uh, having the press conferences, be it about having any kind of mergers and acquisitions, be it about any kind of regular day to day working. He or she is that person who is going to be your first one step solution for all the problems and obstacles that you need to uh, or in case you need to understand with any of the companies working they are the persons who are going to tell you because they are the persons who are having the overall idea of the complete company that is CEO so it may be referred to as one of the managing directors or manager who has been appointed in terms of the company's act the new company's act while if in case of like CFO if I'll talk about so he is that person who is basically taking care of the finance the complete finance he or she is the one uh, person who is being referred to as the whole time finance director or any other person who is basically heading the finance function in any of the company who is being discharging their function with uh, that will certified by the board on various following issues. So CFO basically takes care of all the finance based issues in that company while in case of CEO that's a person who is going to take care of the overall affairs of the entire company. His or her function is just not limited to finance. So that's why CEO is a much, much, much broader term as compared to CFO. I'm not saying that uh, any of them is like likely to work under each other. No, that's just not the case. Both of them are having their individual and respective roles. But if I'll talk about the horizon of the work which is being performed, CEO is the person who is being uh, like accountable with uh, much more responsibilities as compared to the CFO. So that is something I would like to tell you. Now, now comes the certification part. Okay, so the CEO and the CFO, they are the persons who are going to like certify to the board about what? What they have reviewed about the financial statements, about the cash flow statement for the year. And to their best of the knowledge, they have a complete idea that the statements which are being presented in the financial statements do not contain any materially untrue statement or they haven't omitted any of the material fact which contains the statements and that could be misleading. So they usually point out and certify that the kind of a thing which has been presented in the financial statements, it is true to the best of their knowledge and belief. These statements together present a very true and fair view about the company's affairs and they are certainly in compliance with the existing accounting standards and applicable laws and regulations. That is number one. In their certification, they need to provide this to the board that they have reviewed the FS and cash flow statements to the best of their knowledge and belief. Number two, that to the best of their knowledge and belief, no transaction has been entered into by the company during the year which are fraudulent, illegal or violative of any of the company's code of conduct. So they must provide this in their certification that they have ensured that no transaction has been entered into the company which can lead to any of the affairs which is being done under the fraudulent circumstances or something which is illegal, something which is violating any of the company's code of conduct. They'd have to ensure that. Number three, they need to like certify some of the other matters. Okay. This is the basically thing guys, which is usually done by VS auditors as well. Okay. We need to provide our opinion 
that uh, the company's affairs are being done and conducted in a manner which is certainly not detrimental to the interest of any of the persons we know that okay but apart from uh, willingly working as an auditor what is that certain accountability that lies in the hands of ceo and the cfo these are some of the other matters and they need to report number 1 they must report one thing that they accept their responsibility for establishing and maintaining the internal controls for financial reporting in their certification number 2 they must point out that yes they have evaluated the effectiveness of those internal control systems of the company which are pertaining to the financial reporting and certainly they have disclosed to the auditors and to the audit committee the kind of deficiencies that are applicable and available in the system in their design their operation of the internal controls and if any of which they are certainly aware and the kind of steps they will be having or they have already taken or they propose to take in order to rectify all those deficiencies they need to report that in their certification and finally they need to indicate to the auditors and the audit committee about any kind of significant changes uh, in the internal control over financial reporting which has happened during the year or any of the significant changes which has happened in the accounting policies during the year and the same have been disclosed in the notes to financial statements and lastly they need to point out all those instances guys there could be a thing wherein uh, the management this ceo and the cfo are aware that some certain kind of fraud is going on in the company so it is their responsibility okay they need to in- provide the instances of any kind of significant fraud of which they have actually become aware and they know that there is some involvement over there okay if any of all these things of the management or any of the person who is an employee and who is uh, having a very significant role in the company's internal control system over the financial reporting so in, they need to provide all these indicators to the auditors and audit committee this is all about the kind of contents that ceo and the cfo certification under clause 49 sub clause 5 you need to report this question was asked in c final examination for may 2010 all you need to remember is that it is the responsibility of ceo and the cfo to certify to the board that they have reviewed the financial statements and cash flow statements to the best of their knowledge and belief and they are aware of the fact that no transaction has been entered into by the company which is fraudulent illegal or violative of any of the company's code of conduct they need to certify to the board any kind of other regulatory matters in concern with the internal controls for financial reporting and finally they need to indicate to the auditors and audit committee if in case there is something wrong going on in the company with respect to any of the fraud and to uh, they need to make them aware of all the persons either management or the employee who is having the significant role uh, in the company's internal control system over financial reporting this question was asked in c final examination and i have hope i am hoping for the best that yes you guys got the complete kind of understanding with respect to what is being expected out of you while you write your answers in the examination time shall we proceed guys perfect let's move to the next topic and this will be about the duties of an auditor in relation to the ceo and cfo certification now in my last slide i just shared with you what kind of things uh, usually the ceo and the cfo need to take care while they provide their certification okay now comes something on your front the ball is now in your court now you need to understand what is your duty as an auditor in relation to that ceo and the cfo certification number 1 ic framework that is the internal control framework so you as an auditor you should ensure one thing that the management has institutionalized an internal control framework which is absolutely necessary looking into the current circumstances of each and every company be it hospitality be it uh, telecom be it uh, aviation any kind of be it you talk about any of the company you talk about any of the industry internal control is something which is extremely required okay in order to ensure that no fraud no material misstatement no errors are usually encouraged so you as an auditor need to ensure that the management has actually institutionalized a internal control system that framework with respect to the financial reporting controls okay if there will be uh, the internal control proper internal control so you need to analyze whether the same is being like linked with the financial reporting controls or not because that is something which is very much necessary and that the framework should be examined in the context of the documentation which is being created for each significant process in terms of the related risk and mitigating control number 1 
this is your duty as an auditor number 2 is the control assessment so you as an auditor should see number 1 whether the assessment process is being followed by the management for evaluation of the control whether the same process is reasonable or not there might be a possibility that the kind of following follow up of process the assessment process which is being followed by the management is just not reasonable that's just not adequate that's just not sufficient okay so you as an auditor need to perform that thing and you need to tell them up okay the guys uh, your assessment process of viewing into the overall controls about their evaluation their complete progress is just not reasonable okay you need to understand this thing and you need to uh, adapt a few changes in your assessment process and therein you'll be providing them the necessary guidance number 2 you as an auditor need to provide them the kind of process that there is a process by which significant deficiencies as well as the steps which are absolutely required to be taken up needs to be communicated to the audit committee and their auditors okay it is you as a as an auditor you need to take care of both these things about their assessment process being reasonable or not and if in case that's just not reasonable then you need to draw up their attention towards all the kind of significant deficiencies and the kind of corrective steps that needs to be taken that is your duty number 3 is accounting policies so as an auditor you should also examine whether a process exists in the company whereby all the significant changes in the accounting policies and in the system of internal controls are communicated to the audit committee and the auditors or not so it is your responsibility to provide them up so it is your responsibility to check whether there is a particular kind of a process in the company whether the same is existing or not and if in case it is existing are there some amount of necessary changes which are significant in nature which needs to be done or not so you need to report them up okay you need to provide them the basic guidance on that next is the certification process so as an auditor you need to examine that whether the process which is being followed uh, by the ceo and the cfo certification okay whether the same is being adequate or not or it requires some amount of revision you should also review whether the same as per the clause 49a or not whether the same uh, is being like completed as in the same manner which is being depicted under the clause 49 or not and whether the consideration for the same uh, has been like happened and provided and for completely done by the audit committee or not so uh, for this purpose you can simply refer to any of the minutes of the audit committee if you want to so you need to check out the examine uh, check out and examine the adequacy the sufficiency of the process which is being followed under ceo and the cfo certification whether the same is adequate or not and finally if in case you find something uh, which is just not right for the organization then comes the fifth point that is the adverse comments so wherever negative or adverse comment or any kind of exclusion or disclaimer are contained in the ceo and the cfo certificate then you as an auditor should take the cognizance you should take the cognizance of the same as the circumstances basically require you and you should report them in your audit report and on the certificate of compliance of conditions of corporate governance it is your responsibility you have been uh, provided with accountability to provide all these things in relation to the ceo and the cfo certification be it internal control framework be it about the control assessment be it about the accounting policies be it about the certification process or any kind of adverse comment all you need to do is just gear up and work as being required from you out of the institute and uh, certainly you can follow up on that segment these are some of the duties that are being required out of you as an auditor in relation to the ceo and the cfo certification i hope you guys are pretty much clear with each and every kind of a thing now let's move to the second thing that is report report on the corporate governance as per the clause 49 sub clause 6 of the listing agreement so it basically talks about two things primarily two things number one requirements under clause 49 and number two your duties auditor's duties so number 1 what is the requirement under clause 49 let's understand that like before moving on to any of the other segment let's understand what is the requirement first of all and then we can proceed with the kind of uh, expected duties that you are uh, expected to perform number 1 requirement is this shall be there should be a separate section number 1 separate section on the corporate governance in any kind of annual report of the company with detailed compliance report on that corporate governance number 2 
Number second requirement is the non-compliance. Non-compliance of any of the mandatory requirement, which is a part of that listing requirement, listing agreement with their reasons and the kind of extent to which non-mandatory requirements have been adopted should be specifically highlighted in the compliance report. And number three, the companies shall submit a quarterly compliance report to the stock exchanges within 15 days from the close of the quarter, which shall be signed either by the compliance officer or the chief executive officer of the company. These are the three requirements under clause 49. These are the three major requirements under clause 49 with respect to the report on corporate governance. Now, let's talk about something related to auditor's duties. So you as an auditor shall verify what number one that whether the board of directors have complied with the above requirements, which I just made you in short and they should ensure that the report contains all the necessary details which may be required. Any information in the report on corporate governance should not be inconsistent with the one which has been contained in the financial statements. You need to ensure that both the things reflect the same picture. It is your responsibility to ensure that. So I just hope that you guys are pretty much clear with the kind of requirements under clause 49 and what is expected out of you that you'll be delivering as an auditor while you check out and verify the report on corporate governance. I hope you guys are clear with each and every kind of thing that I made you understand in respect to the duties of an auditor in relation to CEO certification and the report on corporate governance as per clause 49 of the listing agreement. I'll be concluding my video with a dose of motivation and that will be the greater the obstacle, the more glory in achieving it. Malier was the person who quoted this beautiful quote. I'll say thank you on behalf of the Edupedia world. Keep interacting by our questions, queries in YouTube comment boxes. We love to have you here while you respond to each and every kind of comment. Perfect. Stay connected. That will help us in understanding your needs way, 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 way better. And if in case you have liked our video, do give us a thumbs up and positive feedback so that this will help us in providing you some better and bigger videos for your better future. Perfect guys, with this I'll see you in the next presentation with some new exciting topic marking the beginning of the same. Till then, sayonara, God bless you all, love you.